Okay, so carrying on, let's have a look at this uh, this algorithm and what it does. So let's say our number that we're testing is five, and we're going to try various divisors starting at two. We're going to try two, three, up to four, one less than five, and see if any of those possible divisors result in an actual factor, i.e., a number that when you divide number by the divisor, you get a remainder of zero. And if you do, you've found a factor, so it's not prime. If you get all the way to the end of the list, if you get all the way up to four, and it still doesn't find a factor, must be prime. Well, let's try it. So I'll run it continuously, and oh, right away, there's a problem. Two turns out to be not prime, but two is prime. How about three? Three is prime, and it works. Four is not prime, it works. Five is prime, it works. Six is not prime. Seven is prime. 8 is not prime, 9 is not prime, 10 is not prime, 11 is prime. So the program kind of works, but it has a bit, of a, a bit of a problem. It doesn't work for 2, which is a prime number, according to our definition. The reason for it is the first divisor it tries is 2. So it takes 2, tries to divide it by 2, finds that it works, no remainder, which means it's not prime. Hmm. So we have a problem. It doesn't find Two. finds everything else, so it's not a huge problem. We also have another problem. It's not a huge one, but it, it's an efficiency problem, and that's that we're going to try all the numbers up to, well, one less than the number we're trying. So if we we're going to check, let's say, oh, one billion and seven, so one and then eight zeros and seven, I happen to know that that's a prime number. Let's test it to see if it's prime. It's got a lot of numbers to try. It's trying all of these possible divisors and finding that none of them work until it gets up to 1 billion and 6. When it tries to divide 1 billion and 6, it doesn't work. So we're going to find out that it is prime, but it takes a long time to do it because we have to count up to such a big number. It turns out we don't actually have to go all the way up to 1 less than the number. We have to go up instead to the square root of the number. Why is that? Well, consider this. If you have a number like 36 and you want to find the factors of 36, you'll find one of the factors of 36 is 2, because 2 times 18 is 36. One of the factors, 2, is less than the square root of 36, which is 6. The other one's greater than. 3 works as well. Right? 3 times 12 is 36. Again, one of the factors is less than the square root, and one is greater than. You don't need to find any factors greater than the square root, because factors greater than the square root have another factor less than the square root. So it means you've only got to count up to not one less than the number, but the square root of the number. Hmm. Well, that doesn't help us with this uh, problem of 2. But it is a problem. Let's try and solve it. So what I'm going to do is change my algorithm. I'm not going to go up to one less than the number. I'm going to go up and replace that with the square root. And in general, the square root of the number is some messy decimal number. So I can't use an equals here. I can't check and see if this, the divisor we're trying is equal to the square root, because most of the time it's not. Remember, the divisors are all integers, and the square root of the number was very often uh, a decimal. So instead what I'm going to do is replace the equals with a greater than. i got to switch the wires as well. And what I'm testing for now is I'm going to, the divisors I'm going to try start at 2 and then go to 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 up until we get to the square root of the number. And if the number we're trying is greater than the square root of our original number, we know we've gone as far as we need to go. Let's try it again for a billion and seven and run this once. Oh, well, look how fast it found that one billion and seven is a prime number. It didn't take long at all. It's really, really quick. The reason for it is instead of having to count and try all the divisors up to a billion and six, it only had to go up to the square root of a billion and seven, which is about 31,000 something. Well, it's a lot quicker to count up to 31,000 than it is to a billion and six. So our program runs much faster. As it happens, very, very happily, I run this continuously, 
if I take this back down to two, doing this change uh, to the square root method of limiting the divisors also, surprisingly also, fixed the problem with not finding that two is a prime. Now it works. Our VI now finds that two is a prime, and so is three, but not four, five, yeah, not six, seven, yes, nine, eight, no, nine, no, 10, no, but 11. Our VI seems to work now. So even though what we changed was just this square root method, it also fixed our two problem. And now we have a reasonably efficient VI that actually does work and test for primeness reasonably efficiently. This divisor number that I've added in here, this indicator for the divisor right here, I don't actually need it. It was really to just show me the divisor is running. I could leave it in here or I could take it out. It doesn't actually help. If I just delete it entirely and delete the wire that goes to it, the program still works and in fact it runs very very slightly faster than before because it used to have to take the divisor and every time the loop ran it had to write the number to the divisor and show it on the front screen that takes a little bit of time and if it's not necessary we should delete it um, for the sake of, of the program's efficiency